Hello everyone, my name is Oleg, I'm your host today and I'm excited about this podcast with Oleg Tkach. Oleg, how are you? Please introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me. I've been a lender since 2005, been doing this for pretty much uh, 18 years and I'm um, going on 19 and uh, super excited to be on the show with you. Um, I know you talk about market predictions, everything. And um, I think right now, more than ever, there's these two extremes of what's going to happen in housing. You know, are we going to have that black swan event and everything's going to crash? Or are we going to get the soft landing the Fed keeps talking about? And essentially, home prices from here will go up. And when I say from here, I mean kind of from these levels, right? Yes. And so thanks for having me. I know we've uh, helped with uh, helped a lot of buyers purchase a home this year. And our goal uh, always is to educate, to give our feedback, our opinion based on what we're seeing, which isn't just based on what we're seeing on different channels or anything like that. It's real life demand from the thousands of clients that we work with yearly and based on what they're doing, why they're buying now versus later, what's the strategy in that and so on. So yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to share. Yes, thank you, Oleg. Last time we recorded the episode with you was about eight months ago and it was a very successful uh, show and we have a lot of comments on that show uh, later on from a lot of people. But market is changing with changing mortgage interest rate and it's higher mortgage interest rate, less people can buy. Today was a very interesting day. Today we had CPI report just announced from Feds and inflation actually increased for 0.6% due to hospitality and energy. And it will be very interesting and I'm very curious to see what's going to be happening this winter because usually in winter time people travel less and spend less energy. So I guess prices are hope going to reduce and rental market usually decreases due to seasonality and in the winter time people are less moving and the rental prices usually decrease i hope those two factors are going to be helped to reduce inflation with october report and i'm curious what's going to be happen but let's back to uh, today's date today we have over 7.3 percent mortgage interest rate for three years fixed mortgages and Oleg, I have now questions for you. What will be your advice for the buyer? For someone who's have a great job, who saved up money, have like 20% for down payment, and they first time home buyers and looking to buy own place. What will be your advice for people who are looking to buy in high mortgage interest rate environment? And the reality is no matter who you are, your payment is a lot higher than you want it to be. You know, when rates were at 2.5% in that range, they were abnormally low. That was not a normal market. Just like right now, when rates are high in the average rates in the mid sevens, it's also not normal. Now, here's, here's the thing. Regardless, and no one could guess when, the group of people that think that we're gonna have a soft landing and you know rates are gonna come down and, and prices are gonna go up, but there's the other side. And the other, the other side that home prices are going to crash and they're going to go 25%, 30% down, which by the way, I just want to just say no one truly knows because anything could happen. It is possible too, but let's talk about the two black swan events that, that, that side believes in. Number one, job market is going to crash. We're going to have horrible job market and in theory, if we don't have, people don't have jobs, people don't have work, it doesn't matter what rates are, they're not gonna be able to buy, right? And they're gonna have to sell, right? If you lose your job and your income is low, you're gonna have to sell your home. And so in theory, yes, if the job market crashes, it will crash our, our housing market. However, the one thing that people don't factor in is since the Fed has been raising rates, raising rates, raising rates, the one thing that has been resilient strong, super solid has been the job market. Our job market has been strong through it all. And unemployment rate is also super low. So in theory, while that could happen so far, it hasn't been affected. So what are the chances that it's going to happen? Not that high. Now, the second uh, event is obviously if we go into a World War III scenario 
And could that happen? Yeah. I mean, when you look at what's happening with China and Taiwan and everything, I mean, if that happens and we go into a full and there's rockets flying, that will definitely hurt our housing market. Um, and so I think when you look at those two, you know, those are the two events that would have to happen. Now, both of those don't happen. The job market stays strong. We don't go into an escalated war that gets really crazy and out of control. There's really nothing else pointing towards that as for the most part, at the end of the day, everything's really pointing towards a soft landing and pointing towards rates coming down and housing uh, uh, demand going up. So in theory, again, it's all comes down to what's the probability, what's the chance. And right now, the higher chance is on a soft landing with home prices going up. Yeah, I think our market's very resilient right now. People quitting job when they applying for a better job with higher paid salary. That's what usually happens. And when they switch jobs, salaries increase and wages increase for those people. With increased wages for those people, uh, houses become more affordable because people make more money. I think this is maybe good things because affordability uh, it's issue right now but affordability will be not be issue if we continue with same trend for a couple of years now i think it's going to be helpful for a lot of people to buy houses as well the high rates are most likely in the next year definitely in two going to be behind us and they're going to be a thing in the past so any that anybody that's buying today they're buying with the plan to refinance as soon as this spring um, and that could be when overall, I think high rates are going to be around for a little bit more until the Fed, the rate hikes are definitely behind us. I think today's CPI report um, definitely cast a vote for no more hikes. And I think that if we do have a hike, it might be another one. I don't think we're going to see much more than that unless obviously some new data comes out. But for the most part, anybody that's buying today, they're planning on refinancing. Now, with that said, in addition to that, the most popular program that we've been running, and, and we run this, we saw this last fall, and we, we're seeing this again this fall, is the 2-1 buy-down, the 3-2-1 buy-down. And that's essentially when you are negotiating with the seller to pay for an interest rate reduction for a few years. And so a lot of our buyers are having success with that. And the idea behind it is that the seller is paying to buy down their rate by 2%, by maybe even 3% for the first year to two to three years. And in that time frame, the, the idea is that rates will come down, you'll refinance, and you're essentially starting with the lower rate today. Now, in turn, do you have to negotiate for it? Yes. Are you going to be able to get this on a home that's really hot, that's listed under value, that has a bidding war? No. But there's plenty of homes right now that are sitting on the market because they're overpriced and that our buyers are uh, getting large seller credits for and they're utilizing that for the buy down. So I'd say right now, what is, you know, why are people buying now versus, you know, waiting a year from now? Well, in theory, if, and, and there was a study done that 84% of people think it's a bad time to buy right now. Um, you have people that Think it's a bad time to buy and you have people that can't afford to buy you have, you have you have that two of those groups right here so imagine when rates do come down and let's just say it happens next year middle of next year it's an election year super high chance we're going to see rates in the fives right high chance not a guarantee but high chance let's say that happens now all the renters and everybody that couldn't buy or think it's a bad time to buy now all of a sudden think it's a good time to buy well at that point, it's just the function of supply and demand. If the demand skyrockets and the supply goes up even a little bit, but the demand is so much higher, we're most likely going to see bidding wars next year. Ex extreme bidding wars, the same bidding wars that we saw back in early 2022 when rates were in the mid fours and people were paying 100, 200, some people a million dollars over ask. That's going to come back assuming we get the soft landing, which right now it's pointing to it. So I would say right now as a buyer, the strategy really is get in, negotiate, try to get the two and buy down, but just know that the large mortgage payment most likely isn't gonna be for more than a year or two before you could refinance and drop your monthly payment down. Yeah, that's very interesting. And uh, 
I like to share some facts. I just recorded my market update for September and I researched data what's happening in Seattle and Bellevue site markets. What I see in those markets just last month and what I see in those markets just actual facts, actual data, 7,930 people purchased properties last month just in Seattle locations. If you combine data together for residential market and condominium market together, 7,930 people moved. So it's almost 8,000 people purchased properties last month. And those people wasn't on the fence. I was actively looking with agents and purchased properties. Of course, a few people bought properties for cash, but majority of people who's purchased property, probably 80% of people who purchased property last month, they got a mortgage. And they got uh, same high mortgage interest rate but they offset with different programs available from uh, lenders like you and with different strategies available uh, for different buyers and i heard some people become very creative with finances if they have 20 percent for down payment uh, and if they good relationship with their parents and relatives they can borrow money from them another 20 or 30 percent if they can get at 20% from your relatives, uh, put it together to your 20%. Now you have 40% for down payment and your mortgage payment going to be much lower with this high interest rate. But this only for someone have good relationship with their parents and parents keep it money in a saving account for like very low interest rate, maybe borrow from them and refinance uh, property when the mortgage rate drops and give them back those money. Give yeah. them back those money with 5% interest rate. Make uh, insensitive for your parents and they're going to be you know, excited uh, to borrow money for you. And you can treat them as a like partial bank for your down payment and you can use maybe they as a like, co-borrowers uh, yeah. to buy this property. But you can get your real estate right now if you really uh, look into it. And I think a lot of different ways to use that. What did your thoughts yeah. look about that? You know, another thing too, Oleg, is that when you look at the true cost of home ownership, not a lot of people factor this in, but you could write off mortgage interest on a loan up to a million dollars. And so when you actually look at the fact that rates are at the all time high, which is a fact, and it's not anything that I would say is good, but if you're paying more interest, in theory, you have more of a tax deduction. And most people that are buying homes, they have solid income. They're paying a lot of money in taxes. And that tax deduction, when you factor that in, it's not a true 7% rate that they're paying. If Let's say their rate is seven and a half. After their tax deduction, I mean, they're looking at rates already, the true uh, cost to them, probably in the fives. So anyway, you know, again, when you look at it, you got property taxes you could write off. For people that are self-employed, they have a home office. I mean, when you really, really, really take that aside and you look at the true monthly payment, a lot of times it's not higher. Now, another one that has come up lately is people are looking at really good school districts and they're saying, well, if I live here and this is why I'm moving, I no longer have to send my kids to private school. Therefore, that alone saves me three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month, depending on how many kids they have. And so it's still like, no matter how you spin it, even with the higher rates for most people, financially, big picture financially, it makes sense. But aside from that, but aside from that, I think that what most people are trying to avoid, because you ba basically have two choices. Do you buy in a lower rate market, which is coming, you could still keep waiting, but have the crazy bidding wars, pay a hundred grand over, 150 grand over, you know, waive everything, cover the appraisal gap, which a lot of people like bring in additional down. You could be in that group, in that camp, or you could be in the camp that gets in. Like you said, there's still tons of people buying. Our demand for, you know, people that want to get pre-approved hasn't really dropped off at all. Now, have we had more people not be able to afford it? Yes. Not qualify for what they want? Yes. But the demand for housing for the most part is still pretty high way higher than most people think. Now, the inventory is also fairly low. So even though when you look at just general demand, general demand for housing has come down in general. But 
and it's still high, but inventory has also come down. So the supply and demand gap has not changed at all. The supply, as supply went down, demand went down. And so that is why you still see prices holding pretty steady. Now, a lot of people will tell me like, oh, well, my neighbor dropped his price down and yeah, but did your neighbor overlist, right? It's the same thing as we, that, that's an outlier. That's not part of the market norm. Same time you have the other home that got listed for 50K under market and what happened? 17 offers, right? That's another outlier. But when you look at the market in general, overall prices have been fairly steady year over year. We didn't see a 20, 30% decline. And that has to do with people just holding on to their houses longer and not listing because they have super low interest rate and they don't want to change that. So that really killed housing supply, which is what helped the housing demand. Yeah, that's good stuff, good stuff. And uh, next year is president election year. And I cannot imagine mortgage rates not going to be decreased next year because historically what we see Mortgage rates usually always decrease when president election year. And I'm curious about it. I'm curious what's going to be happen next year, what we will all see together. And again, uh, some buyers on the fence, but some buyers making choices right now. And of course, it's a difficult choices and this is going to be your choices you have to make. So one choice, they can get house right now with a little bit more higher interest rate and maybe refinance in the future or they can wait and pay higher price uh, for the house but get lower interest rate. It's very difficult choices and I wish people don't have those choices and prices are going to be much lower, much more affordable and interest rate will be like we see like three and a half percent before. I wish that's going to be happen but again chances that's going to be happen it's very slim and we have to live with reality. So reality is people have to make choice right now. And I want to touch one program available from uh, Windermere. It's called Windermere Ready Program. I'll share the screen for you guys. Everybody can see it. So we have available program for sellers as well to help. And in today's difficult market with a very high interest rate and not many buyers can afford to buy a property, only very strong buyers and very smart buyers and savvy buyers who are looking to save, they're actually buying right now. But some sellers struggle with selling properties and majority of sellers who struggle right now to bring properties up to today's market because people don't have much money and some people cannot use the equity. Maybe they lost a job, maybe between job transitions from one job to another job, but they do have equity in a house. And if you guys do have equity in a house, you can use this Winry Ready program, which allows you to borrow up to $100,000 and you can use those money for any renovations, painting, landscaping, cleaning, even staging. And everybody knows staging can increase your sell value for about 4%. But imagine uh, you can do more than that. You can change your kitchen put a new kitchen in a house, put a new flooring, painted house inside, outside, do landscaping. Your property going to be approval a lot and you can get much more money when you sell your house. And I would like to add to that even better than this, what you can do, uh, these programs, uh, you can borrow against your equity uh, up to $100,000 and myself as your listing broker, I'm going to cover fees to use this program 100% at closing out of my listing office commissions. So this is going to be a free program for you. I think this is amazing tool available from Windermere uh, and not many people know about that. Not many people utilize this program. Please reach out to me if you're looking to improve your property and do not have funds right now but wishing to sell property for top dollars on today's market. Well, one thing I think about when I look at this program, two things. One is if you want to really maximize what you sell your home for, I mean, people buy based on emotions, most of them. And so when you come in the house is outdated and everything, as a buyer, they're going to do what they can to pay minimum, essentially, not top dollar in the market, because ultimately, they know they're going to have to go through the hassle of, you know, the remodel and everything else. The second thing that I think about is 
all the people out there right now that are sitting on a ton of equity, their home is in really rough shape, and they are selling their homes to off market to investors that are coming in and buying them for 60 cents on the dollar. So, you know, 65 cents on the dollar, 70 cents on the dollar because they don't have money to do the repairs and because they know that this home will not be financeable. For those people, this could be the difference between selling their home for 30% under market to possibly getting above market um, if they do the re rehab properly. So I think anybody watching this today, if you have you know parents or a friend or just elderly people that you know, because a lot of times it's with elderly that have run out of savings and they're lived in their home forever and it just has deferred maintenance, what better program than this to be able to bring in, especially with you offering to pay for it, to bring this in, do the remodel for them and help them with that and help them maximize their profits and not sell their home for pennies on the dollar, right? Yeah. I'm so really I, think, I think that's huge. I've never heard about this program and I'm in lending and I talk to thousands of buyers a year and talk to a, t a ton of different sellers. I think this is something that we all probably know a person or two that is eventually going to sell that could definitely benefit from this. So thanks for sharing that all. Yeah, they definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, I see also a lot of older people who's listed property in as is conditions because they don't have money to fix the property and they will to reduce uh, 20, 25 percent from the value. And we're talking about a lot of money because medium sell price in Seattle right now is like nine hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so instead of having an investor come in and essentially do the remodel and make a couple hundred thousand they could utilize this program and essentially get what's fair for their home after the remodel is done. Thank you so much guys for being with us today. Thank you so much for spending time and I'm excited to bring this episode for you because we have a lot of information to express and I hope it's going to be helpful and helpful for you to make decisions whether you're going to buy or sell properties in today's market. Yep, and thank you, Oleg, for having me and for everybody watching. I mean, just don't hesitate to reach out to us. If there's something we could help you with, let us know. We've both helped thousands of families purchase their home. Um, we're, we're not going anywhere. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is we never, I've never told somebody you need to buy a home. It's always, hey, if it's right for you, if you're financially able, if you're financially this, then here is essentially how to do it the best in this market because every market changes all the time. And so our goal is to give you the best strategy in today's market to win. And so whenever the time is right for you to buy a home, you definitely want to work with people that have the strategy, that have the play that's winning in today's market. And I think that's what both uh, you and I uh, offer Oleg. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help. Thank you so much, guys. Bye now.